something a little different here for review today and it's the um, A model Dornier uh, J Wow or Val, um, not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, this is in 177 scale, so this is a pre war, um, so pre World War II uh, flying boat by the German company Dornier, which was used by um, a few different uh, countries during the period of the 1930s. This is the um, uh, Spanish Republic one used in the before and during the Spanish Civil War. Um, there's also a uh, another boxing with markings for the Nationalist one, which presumably was captured during the Spanish Civil War. There's also one for the uh, a, a Dutch boxing um, who used it with their navy. I, I, so I've come to understand, and also um, a Russian boxing, which we've also got here. Don't know if you can see that, but there's um, a USSR Polar Aviation uh, version. So um, it's a nice kit. It's quite a big box. Um, I've been looking at it for a long time. It came out, um, I think, last year or early this year. Uh, I think it was in 2016. Um, but it is around the sort of £50 mark. And this is a short run kit. So again, a bit of a uh, sort of disclaimer. This is, again, like a few kits I've done for reviews, this is a short run kit, which means it's not a mainstream release, so it's not sort of Tamiya uh, or even Revel or Airfix sort of grade. It is uh, agricultural, shall we say. You'll see when we start to look at a few um, sprues. Um, it's got a bit of a handmade feel to it. However, it is a Dornier Wow, and uh, the only one I've ever seen available is a vac form kit, so this is some way ahead of that which is um, good. So if you want to do kits like this in, in model aircraft that are a bit sort of uh, unknown or certainly not mainstream, then you're not going to get big, big kit producers releasing these types of aircraft. So, you know, we have to go with something like this. So there will be um, a few shortcomings with this kit, but we'll breeze over that, uh, which we wouldn't generally with the bigger manufacturers, but it's a given that there will be ejector pin marks. There will possibly be blind sides, so one detail only moulded on one side and um, there won't be any part numbers, there might not be any locating pins and that sort of thing. So what we're going to be looking at is detail, cleanliness of parts. Uh, we can't do much on fit until we start sort of building it, but um, just an overall view of, of what you get in the box. So starting with the instructions, there's a uh, nice uh, front page there with a bit of uh, write up here on the, um, uh, on the aircraft and explaining its uh, when it was made and uh, who it was used by, etc. Um, the paint callouts are Humbrol, which you know could be argued um, good or bad, but um, at least there's most paint conversion charts start with at Humbrol, at least as a base, so uh, it's not hard to work out what these paints will be if you want to uh, convert them. Mainly, you're talking, you have got a description of what the paint is, so we've got a light grey Humbrol 64, we've got black. Um, silver, wood, uh, not that there is a sort of wood colour, but you know, um, it's a sort of brown, uh, red, leather, gunmetal and rust. So pretty simple colours, most uh, paint manufacturers have those colours in their range. And there you go uh, with a bit of a parts breakdown. There are a few uh, bits on this in this boxing that are on the sprue that we're not going to use, so they're blanked out, quite a lot of different propeller braids, a few um, parts on the clear sprue here as well, so just uh, the, that's the different options for the different boxings. And um, there's the decal sheet as well, which is actually very impressive. So we'll get to that next, and it's um, quite useful to have a good uh, decal sheet in a kit like this. So starting off, um, very interesting um, instructions, I haven't seen this before, where they list the part numbers with a glue mark presumably showing you um, that all of these parts are due to be glued together and I, I haven't looked through but if there are any parts that aren't meant to be glued I suppose that they'd have a the, the not, um, don't apply glue symbol so paint call outs are using the letter code so referencing here so you've got A through to H and um, there's quite a good detail um, interior here and um, you've got uh, the bracing on the inside of the fuselage half as well, which is, is very good. Um, some of the instructions are a little bit confused. It's almost um, what you'd come to expect from a rodent type kit. It's, it's got that sort of feel to it. 
I'm working through the stages from one to nine. There's a few individual parts here for the um, interior that are built up. Some uh, multiple parts, so there's eight of these oil drums, which are presumably the um, uh, fuel tanks. And then there's a few um, fire walls or, uh, or, or actual walls there for the internal um, for the interior of the aircraft. And then we go on to putting the clear parts in, which um, are quite small, so you could possibly go for the old uh, PVA trick if you didn't want to use the clear parts included and uh, apply them afterwards. And then you start to add the um, parts for the floor of the aircraft here with um, a couple of uh, steering wheels, it looks like, in the foot pedals. And um, then quite a busy piece here where all the parts are coming together with the internal structures and... Um, bracing struts etc as well as the internal walls breaking up the different parts of the interior as you go through and it brings the two halves of the fuselage together and that completes the um, interior part then the roof of the interior goes on as well which closes most of it up so um, it might be a little bit difficult to see any of this I, when we look at the kit parts we'll see if there's any any areas that we could open up but i don't think you're going to see much through those windows that's for sure so it might be a bit difficult so it would be up to you how much you want to put into that interior based on what you'll see at the end. Um, and then once we're into the fuselage, the main fuselage being constructed, it comes together pretty quickly. So you've got the two small um, lower wings here, or um, I guess they're lower rings, and um, the, the fin as well going on. With the rear horizontal stabilisers, they've got struts attaching them as well. Um, a few small pieces here. Uh, on the top of the fuselage and then we're on to the main wing which is one lower piece complete with a few uh, there are a couple spots you've got to cut out here on the lower piece and add on the top pieces to um, let these flaps or, or ailerons uh, fit in so you've just got to be wary of that this, so this is one complete piece on the underneath and then two parts coming on to the top there and then we've got parts for the engine which is it's an exposed engine which is at the top of it's in the middle part of this wing here so it is um, on on show quite quite well and um, here you can see that coming together it's a box uh, construction there and the propellers go on the end and then once that's uh, together then there's a few small parts on the side here which are presumably exhausts pointing upwards and then that comes to the wing and that gets finished off and then applied to the fuselage with the struts underneath so alignment issues here, you have to take your time. That's quite a large wing to get on, so um, I'm not sure what the best way of doing that would be. So you have to give that a, 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 a think about that when you get to that. And um, then a few more small parts there going on, and then finishing off with the options for a, um, a trolley here for the to prop up the back of the <coughs> aircraft because it's a flying boat so it doesn't have an undercarriage and then some wheels here that can be attached to the uh, lower wings. So that's the instructions, uh, pretty good for um, a short run kit. Then there's a nice uh, colour um, painting guide there showing the application of the decals and the black underside and it's an aluminium um, airframe here and just checking, so we've got A and C so so the fuselage is actually light grey as well as the engine and the uh, wings are aluminium. So presumably that's aluminium dope and uh, I guess the fuselage is uh, metal construction so it's been painted and the underside is painted uh, black. So that's what it calls out for here. A really nice printing here, very large roundels and um, it's quite impressive actually. I mean, here's a pot of Tamiya paint and you can see the sort of size of the round door. It sticks out the, out the side of it. So this is a large aircraft. Uh, these decals are printed very well. There's quite a lot of carrier film in between the letters, that, in, in between the letters here. That's all one block. Uh, so you may want to cut around that, for instance. Um, the markings there for the tail as well, which is uh, very handy and quite nice. It saves having to paint that. Um, Although some may, may, may have preferred to have had the anchor uh, separate so they could paint up the rudder so we'll have to see how those decals go down. And then um, the D8 here for the front of the fuselage. And you have a very crisp, really solid colour on the decal sheet anyway that's for sure and um, completely in register so they're very good. Very impressed by those decals. 
So as we get into the kit parts, it all comes in a sealed uh, plastic bag and then the clear parts are in a separate bag inside there as well. So starting with this piece, that's the main lower wing, so it's going to be the tops of the wings attached to it from that side. Uh, detail is nice, but um, right the way through this kit you're going to find that this is, um, like I said, the term agricultural is probably a good one. Um, it does look handmade, so there are quite a lot of marks all the way across here, and um, the panel lines and the uh, recessed parts here do look rough, I suppose, is the best way to say it, but um, it's it's no problem, it, it's certainly workable. I mean, you know, a good surface primer before paint and working the surface and buffing it with uh, some fine sandpaper or sanding sticks uh, would certainly um, help to smooth the airframe out before you paint it to give it a nice look. So that's, um, that's the lower wings, so that gives you an idea of the size of the aircraft. Uh, the main fuselage sides there with the interior ribbing so this is the inside and you've got the detail there on the outside and you've also got the horizontal stabilizers here as well um, and this is very nice no problem there is that like I said there's no locating pin so the um, lower wings here are going to go on as a butt join so just bear that in mind and then we've got the lower part of the fuselage and the top part of the fuselage as well as the fin here as well and um, it's all very nice. This is raised detail now in, in comparison to the recessed detail that we had before. And um, it's handled very well. Like I said, just a little bit rough. So it might just be the fact that you go over and clean things up. So I'm not going to repeat myself. That Reply that to every part on here. That um, it might just take a little bit of work just cleaning up and softening the edges. And here you can see very smooth on the underside and on the inside of the parts here. So no problems there. We're not getting major flash or anything like that, so that's a plus. Um, here are the two sprues for the upper wing, well, the upper part of the upper wing, and they're going to go on in this uh, fashion onto the main piece for the lower wing, and they are curved, so um, there will be quite a gap there, looking at it. It's going to go on um, something like that. So it gives you the curved structure. I don't know why you can see this. What I'm getting at is this: um, there's going to be quite a void there. So this is the only glue part. Uh, the glue gluing surface is along here and along there. So you want to make sure you get a good join between the two. Um, so that's those bits. Uh, again, s subtle raised detail. Very nice here, actually, running your finger across. And quite nice fabric detail as well with the roughness. So it's uh, it's it's very very nice. It's going to be a slight challenge this kit in comparison to, like I said, some of the more mainstream kits, but if you take time and test fit everything, uh, there shouldn't be any problems. And here's parts for the wheels, for the um, if you're going to have it out of the water, and uh, it may take a bit of research to see how these were attached, because it's a bit vague in the instructions. Um, and there's some other parts as well, so you've got those main ailerons, I think these are the ones, one of these we have to cut the top wings to fit, so make a little space for those. And here are the interior fuel tanks as well, along with a few other detail parts. And we've got a few more sprues um, with detail parts to them as well. I think these are duplicates, so those, there's those two and those two. So these are, you've got two of each of these. And these just give uh, quite a lot of interior detail. This is some um, exterior bombs and uh, weaponry for the outside of the aircraft. And this is mainly small components for the interior with the foot pedals, uh, steering wheels, and um, a few parts like that. All very nice. Again, it's not flash, um, very flashy at all. And it isn't, it's not sort of poorly moulded with sink marks or anything, it's actually, the detail is there, but you, you just got to work um, in getting it, sort of, smoothing it out. It's, uh, so you don't need to worry about the, the level of detail in this aircraft, that's for sure, this, it's, this kit's got plenty of it. Um, bringing it to life is where the skill of the model is going to come in, and um, again, 
like I said, just taking your time with test fitting. So here are parts for the uh, main engine block as well. So that's the side, the bottom and the front of it, as well as a few other parts for the top of the fuselage here. And that's very nice. Uh, you don't need any anything on the other side. So as you can see, it is sort of blindly molded. There's no detail on the um, underside of any of those parts. Then we've got a few more duplicates here, so I'll get those out of the way. I think it's these. Uh, so that's two sprues of um, M, which uh, has quite a lot of propellers that I don't think we're going to be using here. Um, but there are a few small parts that come into this, as well as the struts here, which are uh, some of the main components. And um, again, no flash. Uh, there is a seam line slightly, but again, it's it's not much of an issue. So far, it's, it's quite impressive. So it's very nice. That's those parts. Then we've got some um, of the interior parts here. So the, here's some of those separating walls running through the fuselage, as well as an, um, uh, another part there for the front of the fuselage. Uh, the instrument panel and a few seats and chairs here. So it's a very, um, again, detail. It's really nice. There's an anchor there as well, which is quite nice, which has got a ring through the eyelet there. So um, just some fine fine touches here in, uh, with the detail is making this kit quite um, is making up for the short shortcomings of this kit that's for sure and then there are some more parts here this is again all interior so um, these struts uh, make up are in between the walls so let me just get that piece so we've got as the construction goes, you have one of these struts, then one of these walls, as it runs through the fuselage. So it should make for a very sturdy construction, bringing the bottom and the two halves together, then placing the top on, on onto that afterwards. That's very nice. And then this last sprue is, um, again, different propellers here, and a few other small items for the top of the fuselage, as well as making up um, a, a, the trolley here, I think, that props up the rear of the aircraft when it's... Um, on the land. Then we've got um, a sprue of clear parts which is all very small windows as you can see here so it might be worth like I said using the PVA trick if you prefer that. Uh, there's two different types of windscreens I think this is a later version um, I think this if for this boxing it's two curved windscreens um, that go on for each pilot so there's two pilots at the front so you've got a windscreen each. And that's all the parts for this kit so um, Again, it's, uh, like I said, short run kit, so it's what you expect, um, and I think it's very good, to be honest. Um, the price, I think I said at the start, is I alluded to, is around the £50 mark. Now, I've jumped on this because it's been reduced recently, so it's more around the £30 mark. Um, so, there's still a lot of work to do for a kit of that price, but... Um, you know, you're not like I said, you're not going to get this anywhere else. So um, you've got to jump on it when you can. There is a lot of plastic in the box. It's going to be a very unusual model uh, when it's done. You're not going to see a lot of them about. So um, it's well worth a go if you're interested. There are four different types of markings, like I said. So you've got the Dutch one, the Russian one, um, and then two from the Spanish Civil War: one in Republican, one in the Nationalist. So. Um, Something for everyone, I would think, so it's well worth a look. Um, I picked this up on Hannant's with a third off, so I don't know if that offer's still running when you're looking at this, but um, worth a look if you're interested. And uh, yeah, very nice kit. And I'm impressed and I hope to build it. Um, it will be a bit of a long term build, it's not going to fly together quickly, so it um, should be very interesting.